We've all heard the steps when it comes to learning to code. Take some courses, learn the skill, build a portfolio, land the job. Today I want to talk about that third part, the portfolio. This in my opinion is often the weakest link in the chain. Not because the new developer doesn't have a portfolio of apps, but because the portfolio he has is either very irrelevant or it's full of apps he didn't technically build. You see, when a person's learning to code, they're tempted to play the portfolio numbers game, meaning every single thing they create gets added to their portfolio for the world to see. And this can actually harm you more than help you in your job search. Having a to-do app, a weather app, a hangman terminal game at the front of your portfolio landing page screams complete newbie with no experience. Just because you build it and probably learned from it, it doesn't mean it goes into your portfolio. Today I want to give you a progression as to how your portfolio should be formed, some ideas of what types of apps to put in it, and finally how to mature your portfolio over the years so that you'll have a solid wall of projects for any employer to believe in your competency and line you up for that interview. And this is actually part of a talk that I gave this past week in the Travis Media community called A Complete Guide to Learning to Code in 2025. That talk's available for all community members there and we just moved our community over to the school platform Platform, and that's going to be the central hub for all trainings, courses, and conversation going forward. There's a link below if you want more details on that. So let's look at this progression. Number one, you have pre-portfolio apps. Your formative days of learning to code are important. They not only teach you syntax and fundamentals of programming, but they're teaching you how to think like a programmer. And one of the best ways at the outset is to build simple apps that actually aren't really that easy for new developers. Basic apps like a number guessing game, a to-do app, a timer, or a simple calculator. These are very important stepping stones for every new developer. And while you may be really proud of them, they're meaningless in your job search. Create them, understand them, and then file them away. When I was new, I created a game. It was just a long if statement in JavaScript where I added all these sentences like, you are a monkey, you smell like feet, you have bad breath. But instead of you have, I made an array of all my kids' names and nephews and nieces and had it randomly substitute their names and print it out on a page. I thought it was so cool and it made everyone laugh but I soon filed it away. And one thing that's funny about that is those without any knowledge of web development, they see that local app running in a browser and they think it's out on the web and people are seeing it and they get all worried. The job I had at the time, they used to spotlight certain employees on the company's homepage every now and then. And when they did, I would take an image of one of my coworkers and open the developer console and put their image on the page with their name and some sort of write up and be like, hey, look, you're featured on the company's webpage this week. And they'd get all red and all embarrassed not knowing it was only locally changed. Anyway, these are elementary skills, and while you're proud of them at the moment, you'll cringe at them down the road. Learn to build them, absorb the skill, and move on. They don't make it in any portfolio. Number two, you have guided apps. And I consider two situations to be guided projects. Number one, any course like a Udemy course or a zero to mastery course, where they not only teach you a technology or language, but they work through a series of apps with you. You build them alongside the teacher as they are building it. These are great. You learn the bigger picture of how projects are structured, how to keep them clean, and how to build an app of substantial complexity, like a Reddit clone, a Facebook clone, and you build it with your experienced teacher to completion. Now these are great, but at the end of the day, it isn't really your project. Sure, you learned a lot along the way from a seasoned developer, and this is important in the overall cycle of learning. You have to do this, this is the way, but at the end of the day, could you have created that without his or her help? So in regards to this project, whether it's a smaller one or a capstone project, you do want to put this in your portfolio until you get some of the next apps I'm going to share with you built. So treat this as your project, add it as your first or first couple of projects in your portfolio, but just know that you really can't lay claim to it completely, and it can be a little suspicious to hiring managers as they probably see the same apps over and over from Angela Yu, Colt Still, Max schwartz -a -million. In the second situation that I would call a guided app are apps that give you guidelines and outlines but leave you to fill in the gaps. These are great for those who are at the point where they're worn out of Code Along With Me courses. These guided projects, they give you freedom and creativity to build an app that is more your own creation. And I'm not saying this is better than the Code Along course projects. Those are necessary and good to see the big picture and to see a substantial app through to completion alongside of a more seasoned dev. But guided apps that give you the outline but not the substance is the next logical step and will end in a project that is more yours and a project that causes you to wrestle a bit more independently, which is always a good thing. And there's nothing more important at this stage than to write a lot of code and to build things. And before we move on to the next stage where we look at what belongs 
belongs long term in your portfolio, let's hear a word from today's sponsor, a place where you do write a lot of code and build a lot of guided apps in the more independent nature. Boot.dev is an online resource for learning backend web development from start to finish in the Python and Go programming languages, which are two of the best to learn today in my opinion. And it's far from boring as they've created it to literally feel like a role-playing game or RPG with XP that you can earn, levels, achievements, and quests that you have to complete to get a top spot on their global leaderboard. In addition, the platform is designed to get you to write a ton of code because that, in shipping products, is the only way to really learn programming. I think we'd all agree there. I think we'd all also agree that the other key to success is community. Boot.dev has a very active Discord community of students to lend you a hand should you ever get stuck. And while it's much, much cheaper than any bootcamp out there, they realize that some people can't afford a membership and have made it so that all content is free to watch and to read in guest mode. And then with a the paid membership, that unlocks all the hands-on coding, AI assistance, progress tracking, and gamification that makes the content so immersive. So click the link down in the description box and use my code here on the screen to get 25% off your first month or even your entire year if you choose the annual plan. Now back to the video. All right, number three, these are unique from scratch apps. Okay, so you have one or two projects in your portfolio that are legit temporarily. But again, you can't truthfully own these, and you probably can't recreate these by any means without going back to the course to figure out all the particulars. This isn't good. So here's the next step. This is the turning point where you will make exponential gains in your competency as a developer. This will separate the Steve Wozniaks from the Matt Mullenwigs of the world. Now that you've completed the course project, a main course project, you want to now focus your time on creating a unique app, similar in complexity, but one that you make from scratch. First, you'll have your first real complete project to boast about, to explain, to show off your coding style and to ultimately call your very own. Second, let's discuss the growth. Let's say you build a Reddit clone as your main project in your course. You want to now build a unique app similar in complexity to that, but from scratch, on your own. And you can even give it your own twist or make it more personal or specific to certain industries or audiences. But the key here is that you are now faced with a blank Slate. You have to decide the tech stack. You have to decide the architecture of it, like the database design. You have to keep it clean, modular, organized, and that's only the start. As you move forward, you're gonna hit roadblocks. You're gonna run into bugs that you can't figure out, and that will lead you to the documentation where you're going to have to actually learn for yourself how the particulars work. I know I've said this in my past videos, but years back, I really wanted to learn React, and I decided to build a note taker app from scratch. So I went through all of this prep work, I started writing the code, I ran into all kinds of roadblocks, I got frustrated, I dove into the documentation, and I came out of it weeks later with a complete application, a good understanding understanding of React because I had to do the work myself and dig through the documentation and learn what things like use memo means. And it was overall a great learning experience. And when you come out of this app all bruised and bandaged, you can bet that you will understand that technology 10 times better than you ever would have understood it any other way. You'll be able to recall hooks you didn't use prior to this, like use ref or use memo. You'll know state better. You'll be way better at JavaScript as it takes you out to the woodshed every day for a meeting. And more importantly, you'll have an app that is 100% yours and 100% portfolio ready. Ditch the previous apps and put this one at the forefront. Go back over it, make it real pretty, write up an article about it. This is 100% yours and you're 100 times better for doing it. And then finally, number four are apps that benefit yourself or others. This is where you begin to not only mature your portfolio, but to mature your position in the dev space. In this final stage, projects will now be real solutions that you solve, not just mock apps. You may not realize this, but there are many times throughout the day that you do the same thing over and over. There are many times throughout the day that your company does the same thing over and over or very inefficiently. This is where you start to build real apps that benefit yourself or others. These are apps that you're really proud of, the apps that get starred on GitHub. We use packages and repos daily, but we don't take time and realize that these are everyday developers creating solutions for people to use. This is what really impresses employers. Oh, you built Flask. Oh, you've contributed to Kubernetes or such and such open source project. Oh, that requests package in Python, that was you. It could have been. These are the apps that make you a legend, that seals your place within the industry, that gets put on the front page of a portfolio that really stands out. And guess what? 
It doesn't have to be an amazing app. Check this. I did a video a while back building out a Rust desktop app, and it's a simple calculator, but it's very specific to my needs. In my business, I follow the profit first methodology. If you've ever read that book, 30% goes to taxes, 55% goes to me, 5% goes to profit, which I can spend on whatever I want, and then 10% goes to operation expenses. And actually, that's not what he recommended in the book, but that's what I've set for myself. It's just me and my business. But anyway, I allot this percentage of everything I make to these four categories. And it's very simple. But look, it has 38 stars, and I haven't added anything else to it. I could hook this up to the You Need a Budget app API and have the calculations added automatically to my budget if I wanted to. I could do 100 more things with it, and it could become something amazing that I could even charge a one-time price for. But just this basic starting point got starred by 38 people. In fact, it has a pull request where someone wants to add some additional code to make it more safe. I love it. And it was basically just a desktop app that I built for my own purposes. It solves a problem for me. But you can bet when you have a need, there are many others that do as well. So be on the lookout for app ideas that solve problems in your day to day or the problems of others. This could even become down the road a profitable business for you. Think about Theo with Upload Thing or some of the other apps that he's built. It all comes from, quote, I got sick of doing this thing over and over, so I built a solution for it. And I'm going to charge a few bucks for anyone else with the same need to use it. And I'm like, Thanks for doing that, here's my money. Here's a thought. So I'm a crypto guy and I often have to look at price points that I wanna get out of the market at. And I often do that according to market cap. So I'll divide the market cap by circulating supply to get the current price. And then I'll change that market cap to a volume that I'm looking to exit at to get that price. Then I'll multiply the price by the number of tokens I have, and I'll get an idea of my potential profit. And I do all of this currently with the built-in Mac calculator, but why not make it an app? I'm sure there are others doing the same calculations. Push it to GitHub, write up a good readme for it, maybe down the road attach a database and allow the user to save these price points and reference them easily and set up alerts. Maybe attach it to an API to get the prices real time. Who knows? But this could make a great portfolio project if done right and built out far enough because it solves a real need. And as you grow as a developer, your portfolio becomes full of real, meaningful solutions that make a difference and that keep you marketable. And your GitHub shows all your work and you can't imagine a day where you would even think about pushing a number guessing game there again. So that's my advice for building a portfolio that makes a difference. What are your thoughts? What's in your portfolio? I'd love to hear about it down in the comments. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, consider doing so, and I'll see you in the next video.